question about the combined rank. When I was looking at the Obermott ranks, intuitively I felt like the combined rank would be the average of the value growth and safety ranks, but it's not. So uh, some of the stocks I looked at, when I saw the numbers for value growth and safety, when I saw the combined rank, I almost thought that there was a mistake. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me what the combined rank actually tells us? Yeah, the combined rank is a rank of the other three ranks, which means uh, we are calculating the average of the other three ranks and then compare that average with comparable other stocks. And the stock with the highest rank gets the value of 100 because it's better than 100% of the others, even though their average is lower. If that were not the case, if you would, if you would just use the average then you would only, it would only go so far. You would maybe only go to 76 and people would think like, okay, where are the better stocks? So we decided it's, it's more intuitive to have a rank that goes from 1 to 100 when looking at the combined performance. Does this make sense? Yes. So I looked a lot at value and then the combined rank was for me secondary. But from what you're saying, if I want the best all-around stock, then I could also just focus on the combined rank. Yes, you can focus on the combined rank. However, the combined rank could be high uh, because of uh, two good ranks and, and one bad rank, which may be sufficient to be a high combined rank. And you may still think that, that this third rank is important to you. That's maybe it's safety, you know, and it's like, okay, I don't want that. It all comes down I don't want to any red in any of the ranks. Yeah, you see. So, so when you look at the combined rank, it's probably the filter that gives you a higher likelihood of companies with good ranks all over. But we cannot we cannot filter for three or four things at the same time because you know you, you would have to make that trade off. You would have to put limits, and it would become very complicated. Mm -hmm. So we decided because you cannot you know rank. Uh, meaningfully on on three ranks at the same time, making sure that none of those ranks is bad, uh, we said we, we do the combined rank as an additional way of identifying interesting stocks quickly. So when you filter for combined rank, you get those companies which uh, have the best overall average, and some of them will still have bad individual ranks or single ranks, but many will or some will then have good ranks on all dimensions. And because you you see that quickly in the filter, you can you know expand, you know watch the next ten, watch the next ten. So when you look at the first thirty, you have enough companies with where many ranks are actually good. Okay. In respect to the ranks, yeah, I always have to uh, keep in mind that ranks tell you facts; they are not recommendations. Mm -hmm. So it, they tell you, for instance, a good value rank tells you this stock is cheap. And that's not a recommendation yet. It may be justified that the stock is cheap. So what you have to do is you have to get a company with a, a, a good value rank that is obviously cheap that you still like. So when you look at the company, you still come to the conclusion, this company has a good future and I may get that good future on the cheap. It's, it's a little bit more straightforward with the safety rank because more safety means less debt and, and, and there's less chance of going bankrupt. However, when, when the market goes up, the problem is, you know, when the market goes up, it's actually good to have a lot of debt because then you profit more from the upside. It's only a problem when it goes down. Yeah. So even the safety rank has to be interpreted. Yeah, that's very helpful. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, are these all the questions? For the moment, I'm looking forward to searching for my next stock. Okay, very good. Looking forward to the next uh, podcast when we discuss that. Mm -hmm.